My name is Dr. Kamal Kumar. I head the medical uh, affairs department at Ajanta Pharma. On behalf of Ajanta Pharma, I welcome uh, the first session for today's edition two of Cardio Master Workshop. Course directors uh, for this edition are Dr. Ajay Mahajan and Dr. Milind Farke. So uh, before starting the meeting, uh, we on uh, behalf of Ajanta Pharma would like to salute all of the doctors who have been true warrior in the current uh, pandemic uh, situations. Uh, we thank you all of the doctors, sir. And uh, uh, as a uh, token of appreciation uh, towards our bit, uh, towards uh, fighting this COVID-19 pandemic, Governor of Maharashtra has also appreciated Ajanta Pharma. Uh, we take pride in uh, announcing that we are the uh, we are the company which have introduced more than 150 products uh, which are first to market in india in last 10 years uh, we are spread across 30 countries and uh, the, with uh, across uh, four continents and uh, 6500 plus uh, strong team of agentites is a dedicated team uh, from uh, uh, different nationalities 28 uh, different nationalities we have eight state of art manufacturing facilities facilities in India and Mauritius and along with uh, US FDA approved uh, units in India as well. Uh, with our strong uh, R&D thrust, uh, we have uh, a complete value chain uh, with which more than 750 scientists are working across state-of-art facilities. And we have a very, very strong presence in cardiology and diabetology, in ophthalmology, dermatology and pain management. Regarding today's agenda, uh, the topic for today's discussion is ECGs, twists and uh, traps. Speaker for today's meeting is Professor uh, Aditya Kapoor. Moderators are Professor Ajay Mahajan and Professor Milind Fadke. And expert panelists are Professor Santanu Guha, Professor Yashpal uh, Sharma and uh, Professor uh, P.J. Nathani. Along with that, uh, in our PG graduate students, uh, we have uh, Dr. Sriram from LTMC Mumbai. Dr. Sunil Dige from JJ Hospital, Mumbai, Dr. Sunil Mondal from uh, GB Panth uh, Hospital, Delhi, and Dr. Anish from Jayadeva, Bangalore. Uh, our moderators for, uh, for this edition, uh, Dr. Ajay Mahajan is Professor and Head uh, Department of Cardiology at GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, Mumbai. Dr. Milind Fadke, Additional Professor uh, of Cardiology at LTM Medical College and LTMG Hospital, Sion, Mumbai. Uh, uh, today's presenter, uh, Professor Aditya Kapoor, is Head of Department at SGPGIMS Lucknow. And uh, uh, among expert panelists, Dr. Santanu Guha is the Senior Consultant consultant cardiologist at Kolkata. Professor Yashpal Sharma is head of department at uh, PGI MER Chandigarh and uh, Dr. Uh, Professor PJ Nathani is head of department at LTMGH Mumbai. So with this, I again take this opportunity to welcome all of our esteemed uh, uh, guests and experts for today's meeting. Now, without taking much time, uh, I would like to invite today's moderator, uh, Professor Ajay Mahajan and Professor Milind Farke to take the meeting ahead. Uh, Dr. Ajay Mahajan and uh, Professor Milind Farke, over to you, please, sir. Good evening, uh, dear students. Uh, today's meeting is very, very important. Uh, basically, this particular program for PG training is totally designed by Dr. Milin Farke, and we have taken he had taken each and everything into consideration. The most important thing when we start discussing the case, the first thing comes investigations, and in, and in investigation in cardiology, the most important investigation is electrocardiogram. So when you are facing any examination. Actually, when the examiner is examining the student, he is very, very interested in your ECG knowledge and how to present the ECG during exams, what are the simple things and what are the most important things in ECG to be uh, seen and which are sometimes which mislead us for the diagnosis, but we have to take into the consideration regarding the case history and the ECG findings for the diagnosis. And for this particular thing, the most important person who are going to teach us, who are going to enlighten us is Professor Dr. Aditya Kapoor. He is the head of the Department of Cardiology at SGPJ Lucknow. And he is the most important and very, very 
esteemed uh, teacher as far as ecg and electrophysiology the other panelists like a professor dr shantanu guha and professor dr uh, yashpal sharma they are there to uh, enlighten us further so we'll i'll uh, request dr aditya kapoor sir to start today's uh, proceeding and uh, in between uh, dr milind phadke sir will also uh, give his important comments uh, during the lecture uh, this is a interactive lecture four students are going to be uh, there to uh, give us some clues and some answers related to the ecgs and we'll discuss this uh, in the session and that is one of the most important session with the basic investigation that is electrocardiogram over to professor dr aditya kapoor sir thank you dr ajay so i'll start sharing my screen is my screen visible yes it is visible okay so as usual you know it's my privilege to be here and in fact any meeting which dr ajay conducts so i am honored to be here with the elite panel which we have so i'm sure we will learn from all of them and as dr ajay sir said this is going to be an interactive discussion so i just have 9 or 10 ecgs we'll see how much time we have and uh, uh just moving forward so this is a is the ecg available ajay sir is it visible yes it is visible yeah. so i'll just read out the history is a 62 year old male who is a hypertensive diabetic for 5 years he has got a left arm discomfort for the last 4 hours and this is the ecg which was transmitted to us as usual nowadays by whatsapp so can does anybody want uh, ajay sir who are the students do they want to have a go because there are dr sunil dr anish dr sriram there are two sunils one is from delhi and one is from uh, mumbai and uh, so this was the ecg which was transmitted as an acs so do, would you like to read the ecg somebody wants to have a go dr <laughs> sunil or dr anish or dr sriram so sir, this is a 12 yeah. lead ecg sir i am dr anish sir yeah. uh, this is a 12 lead ecg sir the axis uh, being around 90 degrees yeah uh, Mm, uh, it appears that the p waves are negative in leads 2 3 and avf uh, the heart rate is around uh, 80 per minute uh, with slight stt changes in leads 2 3 avf but because uh, the uh, p waves are inverted it could be a low atrial rhythm causing a pseudo infarct pattern but given the history that he is a 62 year old male with diabetes and hypertension i would like to go ahead with cardiac enzymes first um so good so i like your approach in the sense that you know you started with the rhythm you said that the p waves are inverted looks like a low atrial rhythm you have some suspicion of a acs uh, so you would like to do a cardiac biomarker so supposing the guy who is in the periphery he tells you ki sir biomarker is not available with us and we want to consider thrombolysis or you know maybe we want to take him to the lab or something like that so what would your answer to him be supposing they say the biomarker is at present okay you know he is just uh, say if uh, the biomarkers just, are just, fine just, sir just a minute, uh, there just, is just a minute sorry four hours hue hai na so maybe the biomarker is not in that window he says the biomarker is pretty much okay we have a quantitative we don't have a, we have a qualitative test so shall i take him to the lab and do a check angio or something like that so uh, i would like uh, i would recommend to uh, keep the patient in the casualty itself and repeat biomarkers after 4 hours right. and to serial ecg sir okay. and to assess the symptoms sir whether the angina is typical or not okay if the so, angina is very typical then maybe a uh, emergent angiogram would be good okay. if the okay. symptoms are not very typical and he is hemodynamically stable then wait and watch sir so okay so your analysis was that uh, the p waves are inverted the qrs uh, there was some inversions in the inferior leads i just want to draw your attention and the panel again to so this is the changes which are very much obvious you know when the ecg came to us you see the isoelectric lead one right lead one is isoelectric right yes sir complete, there is a completely negative 2 3 avf the entire pqrst is inverted 
So in a low atrial rhythm, the QRST will not get inverted. And again, you know what? Sometimes we forget. Look at AVR and AVL. AVR is upright. AVL is upright. Both of them look similar to each other. So in the light of this, would you like to? Again, you were on the right path. So when the ECG came to us, we suggested to them. there is an isoelectric lead one so when will a lead be isoelectric because very very often you know when the leads are isoelectric we say okay, okay there is no problem kuch artifact hoga but you know dr ajay dr shantanu dr yashpal will bear me out that this is an important marker important thing of a clue that something is amiss and again avr if you see avr cannot be upright na if you see yes, avr sir. or p wave be upright hai. so sometimes in our hurry to diagnose an acs I mean, we are justified to diagnose an ACS. You should have a low index of suspicion. But why is the AVR upright? So, what would you suspect now? There could be a lead reversal, sir. Ah, so, that's could, very important. So, there could be a lead reversal. What kind of a lead reversal? You are absolutely right. So, I'll just you know we'll just move forward because this is a complex lead reversal. Normally, we are familiar with the left and arm, left and right arm reversal, which is, looks like a dextrocardia. AVR upright हो जाता, but sometimes in ACS, if we have time, I'll show you a couple of other examples. So this was a real occurrence. So this is a bilateral upper and lower limb reversal. That is the left arm को left leg में ले आए हैं and right arm को right leg में ले आए हैं. So I'll just show you a schematic diagram as well and explain. And this was a repeat ECG with correct placement. So you see now, lead one is perfectly fine, lead two ठीक हो गया, three ठीक हो गया. AVR is what is it is expected to be. So there is no ACS, right? So this ECG is perfectly normal now. So I'll just explain you by a diagram that how you can figure out what lead placement it was. So normally, as a hota, you right, right arm, left arm, left leg, right leg, and this is AVR, AVL, AVF, right. So now you imagine a situation that left arm is here and right arm is here. Don't open niche ho gaye. Left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg. because the only way you can get a lead one lead one is left arm and right arm right so the only way you can get a lead one isoelectric is if you change the right leg with the right arm and the left arm with the left leg so these two record a zero potential so lead one becomes isoelectric right now if you imagine which is lead two lead two is normally right arm and left leg right right arm and left leg is Lead two, so either right arm either है, left leg either है. So this is what is lead two. And lead three जो है, this is lead three is this one, left arm left leg. So lead three becomes totally inverted, right? So lead three totally invert हो गई. And lead two and AVF will become similar and inverted just like lead three because if you see lead two यहाँ पे है where my arrow is coming. Lead three, you understand why is why is, does lead three become inverted? Because left leg इधर चला गया, left arm इधर चला गया. So lead three totally invert हो गया. Lead one isoelectric हो गया. And lead two and AVF become identical and similar to the inverted lead three. And since right leg is here, since right leg is the neutral electrode is now displaced here, so AVL and AVR will become similar. So this is a classical ECG, and we actually you know managed to publish it as a topsy turvy ECG. कि ऊपर नीचे आ गया नीचे ऊपर चला गया तो क्विक एंड इजी वे टू सस्पेक्ट बायोलैटरल आर्म लेग इंटरचेंज अ वेरी इजी वे इज अगर लीड वन आइसो इलेक्ट्रिक है तो दैट मींस लीड वन इज रिकॉर्डिंग अ जीरो पोटेंशियल दैट मींस लेफ्ट आर्म राइट आर्म नीचे आ गया एंड इन्वर्टेड लीड थ्री टोटली इन्वर्टेड लीड थ्री विच लुक्स आइडेंटिकल टू लीड टू एंड एवियर बिकॉज इन दैट सिचुएशन एज आई शोड हेयर यहां पे बोथ टू एवीएफ एंड लीड थ्री ऑल थ्री आर रिकॉर्डिंग द पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस अक्रॉस द लेफ्ट आर्म एंड लेफ्ट लेग सो ऑल विल बिकम सिमिलर सो इफ यू सी दिस ईसीजी आई विल ब्रिंग बैक दिस ईसीजी सो लीड वन आइसोइलेक्ट्रिक टू थ्री एवीएफ अगेन द थिंग व्हिच यू पिक्ड अप वाज सम एसटीटी चेंजेस बट इफ यू सी एंटायर कॉम्प्लेक्सेस कैन नॉट बिकम इनवर्टेड इन अ लो एट्रियल रिदम एंड एवीआर एंड एवीएल बिकमिंग डोमिनेंट अपराइट so this is a topsy turvy ecg so the point of showing this ecg it happens it happened to us for the first time and you know we were able to sort of pick it up and do not ignore an isoelectric lead pay attention to leads with 
totally inverted PQRST. So that is one important carry on message. Sir, shall we move forward, Ajay sir? Uh, yes, I want to give also one carry on message. So the most important thing in ECG is that your V1 to V6 is not always changed, never changed. So when V1 to V6 is normal and you are getting all problems in limb leads, then always you have to think about some lead placement uh, problems. So here you can see V1 to V6 is absolutely normal. And you are getting all problems in lead um, limb leads. So if limb leads is having some problem and chest leads are uh, normal, then always you have to think about the limb lead positioning problem. Thank I think you. That's a, that's a great carry home message once again. So isoelectric agar aara hai, agar koi lead totally inverted hai, and if precordial leads look the same, they look normal, then you should suspect some lead misplacement. Great. Shantanu sir, shall we move ahead? Yashpal sir? Yes, yes, please. Please, please. Okay, sir. So this is the second case. If somebody wants to go at it, 40 year old lady who is hypertensive, having recurrent syncope, and of course referred for a device. So can you read the ECG for us? Uh, um, who wants to have a go? Uh, so many try. Because I'm very happy the previous person tried and he approached it very well. So that is how we want the diagnosis. I mean, we're not really bothered if you get the right diagnosis, but your approach should be good. Uh, sir, may I try? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, sir, this looks like the lead two, which is available. It looks like to be in sinus rhythm. And uh, the upper the upper lead, it is showing sinus rhythm. The There is a normal P wave and a QRS. Uh, uh, this thing, voltages also appear to be normal. Uh, the PR interval appears to be normal. Uh, there appears to be some uh, sort of a QT prolongation. The heart rate is around uh, 75. There appears to be some sort of a QT prolongation. In the second lead, the second run, we can see that there is a VPC uh, which which is present. And after there's a compensatory pause, there's a, again sinus beat, but the second VPC seems to have occurred on the T. So there is an R on T phenomenon because of which there is a, a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia which has occurred. Excellent. So I didn't get your name. Who are, who are you? Sir, this is Dr. Sriram from Sign Hospital, sir. So great, great uh, interpretation. So as you rightly say, there is a polymorphic VT. And here you have a probably R on T uh, thing which precipitates the malignant arrhythmia. There is, seems to be a suspicion of a long QT. And as you know, Dr. Yash has also taught us so many times, if in an ECG you bisect the RR interval into two, by and large for heart rates between 60 to 100 beats per minute, if the T wave falls on the right side of the line, it looks like a long QT. So you're absolutely right, looks like a long QT. And when this lady was cardioverted, she of course went uh, underwent a defibrillation. This was the ECG. So you would like to go ahead with your interpretation? Uh, yes, sir. This appears to be normal sinus rhythm uh, with an axis of around, uh, around 60 degrees maybe. And uh, around, no, so the axis seems to be around, yes, around, around six, plus 60 degrees. Uh, the, the, P, the P waves and PR, PR interval appear to be normal. There is Q, QT prolongation and also there, is, there are slight U waves which are seen at the end of the P waves, at the end of the T waves. So uh, I would like to look at the serum potassium levels. Maybe patient could have potassium and magnesium levels. Maybe patient could have had hypokalemia or hypomagnesemia which could have precipitated this prolongation of QT and hence patient could have uh, gotten uh, R1T phenomenon because of the uh, high diselectrolytemia and hence could have precipitated into torsades. Excellent. So I completely agree with your analysis. Wonderful. So it looks like U waves and obviously there is QT prolongation. And as you rightly said, here are the potassium levels for you 2.7, right? So what no. would you do now? Of course, you replenish the potassium. You do the potassium thing and it's fine. Sir, I would first like to, uh, like first immediately after correcting, I would give IV correction of the potassium and uh, I would keep monitoring the ECG till the uh, U, yeah, U yeah. waves disappear and the QT comes so, to a normal level. So so what I was trying to tell you was that the, you replenish the potassium, she's fine now and uh, she's fine. So what do you do for her now? Sir, I would first like to look at her uh, 2D echo and look. Normal. Confirm that it. Echo normal. Sorry, sir? I, echo is normal. 
somebody wanted to have a go at the coronary as well angiogram done normal is referred for an icd sir i would first like to ask if there is any family history because at present we have a gross electrolyte disturbance which could have been the cause of the qt prolongation so i would first like to rule out anything which would have precipitated this electrolyte abnormality or any drugs which the patient is taking i would like first like to rule out all those things because in the she is a hypertensive so she could be on some thiazides or some diuretics which could be precipitating her hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia i would completely, first like completely agree with you echo normal angiogram normal family history as you rightly said was taken it was normal and she was not on any diuretic so, hypertension with hypokalemia sir i uh, maybe hyperaldosteronism i would yes. like to rule out sir. excellent 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 very good yeah very good so this, this was the exact diagnosis so hypertension with hypokalemia in fact uh, uh, ct was done so she had an adrenal adenoma con syndrome and it was actually rejected and so this was the diagnosis so brilliant absolutely correct and dr ajay was spot on and giving you the hint at the right time so <laughs> so good 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 approach shantanu sir shall we go ahead ajay sir excellent case yes okay. sir thank yes, you and sir. good good diagnosis so again the second message you know utility of an ancillary workup and i was very happy with the way you approached it so you asked for potassium levels at the right time an echo should be done obviously somebody might elect to do an angiogram but more often than not the angiogram is normal family history needs to be taken and as ajay sir pointed out hypertension with persistent hypokalemia in fact she had hypokalemia for many years altogether but it was probably sort of ignored or Uh, somebody did not thought it important to work up so this is the third case so this is the ecg again standard ecg somebody wants to like to read it just nothing hi fi about it just go ahead ajay sir koi kon kisko bol sakte hain just just go ahead na anybody you can volunteer ha milin sir aap pakdiye kisi ko राइट Uh, right. there is st elevation in 2 3 avf lead 3 is more than 2 and there is st elevation in v1 also so the inferior plus rvmi so probably proximal rca you are thinking also what do you do yes sir so uh, the window period of the patient is important so you will take a history right yes sir okay. history of the history. so this is inferior changes so i tell you this is the history 47 year old female admitted to the ed with 6 hour history of dyspnea cough and wheezing you not very sure about the pain i mean you know it's a leading question you ask her wo kehti hai ha ji thoda bahut pain bhi hota hai but her predominant symptom is dyspnea cough wheezing and uh, rush to the cath lab troponin is 0.08 echo is by and large normal i mean you know window is poor she is slightly obese the guy say that co i i have a doubt there is a mild inferior hypokinesia overall ef is normal so what do you do now take her to the lab hello hello kon Symptoms of chest pain and troponin being negative. Point zero eight. I make it point one. I point one. कर देता हूँ. My point is that you. So would you take her to the lab or would you want something else? So there is no hypokinesia on the echo. So mild inferior hypokinesia. चलो. If hypokinesia is, if hypokinesia is there, then we can take her to the lab, sir. Would you like to see an X-ray? Yes, sir. X-ray. Definitely. I show you this X-ray. Uh, the the so this appears to be a right-sided uh, pneumothorax. Yeah. 
correct so there is a huge pneumothorax so again yes, the sir. point of showing you such ecgs are you know we have good clinicians sitting over here who are master clinicians dr shantanu is there dr yash milin ajay so the point is whenever a patient is in the ed by and large before we rush such patients to the lab we should try to do a good clinical examination she i have told you she has dyspnea cough wheezing so if you have time for an x ray you should try to get an x ray if you have time to do a good clinical examination because by and large what is happening is many guys come to the lab directly and we don't examine them clinically so these so so this was the x ray so now of course when you have an underlying condition you would obviously not take the patient to the lab so a chest tube was put so this was post tube and this is the post tube x ray so remarkably the change is completely resolved after putting in the tube so again the point of showing such an ecg i'll just show you one more example in continuation with this only because if you take these guys to the lab it will be a disaster not only will you be putting in a catheter you will be giving heparin you will be giving some blood thinners so if clinical correlation is very very important don't treat patients based on an ecg alone often we tell our residents i am sure other people would also be telling them we get consults from different wards ki yaar ecg dekh lo keval so you know just should not give a impression or diagnostic impression just based on an ecg alone so this was the second case if you see over here i'll just not ask this because of course the diagnosis chal okay you go ahead and tell me the ecg again let's let's run it through so that is why i have labeled them 3a 3b because just what is the ecg show here uh, in this ecg there is st elevation in evr and v1 sir only correct the st elevation and v3 and v4 also sir v2 to v4 correct yeah avr and v1 so again you know everybody including including me we would diagnose an evolving acs there is absolutely no question but again take some time to spend some minutes to the patient he gives a history he is a severe copd patient coronary artery disease hypertension diabetes he was in the emergency for some shortness of breath right and a right igv line was being placed by the anesthetist he developed severe hypoxemia during the puncture developed respiratory failure was intubated immediately so obviously you know you put two and two together the temporal profile of the procedure following that the patient became hypoxemic obviously you would think that the patient had some hydrogenic compound hydrogenic pneumothorax absolutely so he again got a pneumothorax and this ecg is so these ecg changes can occur i mean one should be aware about these rare possibilities you know uh, the topic is traps tricks so you know these are rare possibilities but again if you remember that this can happen one will not make these mistakes so this was the post tube x ray and remarkably the ecg completely resolved after putting in the tube so mechanistically what happens is there is pressure on the heart and the coronary vessels which can precipitate ischemia during these Uh, you know when there is air in the pleura pneumothorax is there hypotension is there hypoxemia is there it makes a patient tachypneic increases the oxygen demand and cardiac preload venous return they are all impeded with cardiac rotation can happen so all these pseudo sct segment shifts can happen so again the point of showing you these ecgs was that before you rush these patients to the lab take some time take a good history put your steth on the patient you will be able to pick up pneumothorax you can obviously pick up if you can order an x ray because x ray hardly takes 15 20 minutes if your x ray is getting delayed at least auscultate the patient because don't rush these patients to the lab because these rare and catastrophic stt changes can occur in pneumothorax as well shall we move forward sir so never underestimate an x ray that is clinical teaching you know we are often ignoring the power of an x ray in our you know rush to become good interventional cardiologist so everything should be balanced shall we go ahead sir yes please go ahead okay sir very unusual uh, ecg sir i mean the students would have seen them for the first time probably yeah yeah because you know the point is that if uh, we have made a mistake once we should not let anybody else make that same mistake absolutely <laughs> so this is a monitor strip of a 21 year old guy shortness of breath dizziness blood pressure is 90 and he has a audible systolic murmur as well so this is the ecg uh, just a monitor strip 
So SVT, VT can't say. Anybody? Any of the students? Uh, sir, may I try? Ha ha, sure, please. Sir, it appears to be uh, uh, there's a broad complex tachycardia, but the, they are not uniform. They are not completely monomorphic, but there is like there are some. I can see some P wave. They are like, irregular also. They are they are irregular. There are some P waves which can be seen on seen on the upslope of the QRS complex and some some occasional P wave like things which are present in the between two QRS, I would maybe go and some appear to be narrow. Maybe they are fusion beats. I would go with a ventricular tachycardia. Sir. Absolutely. So again, good approach. So you described it as a broad QRS rhythm, which appears slightly irregular. It seems to be some P waves and, you know, everybody of us would say that looks like a ventricular tachycardia, right? But again, sometimes we know that we should not try to diagnose a bizarre rhythm based on a single monitor strip. So I'll just show you some additional strips. So this is V1, V2, V3, same patient. So this was the monitor strip and you're absolutely right that we would consider V3, completely agree. So this is V2, V3. So does it add to your information? You would want to add something to your analysis? So there appears to be some, some it appears to be irregular sir so i would like to because he's appears to be hemodynamically unstable as well 90 by 60 and he has a tachycardia i would first it i, I cannot completely rule out a wpw with afib as well sir but that's the thing wpw with afib uh what do v2 v3 do is do they show you anything else there are intermittent capture beats sir okay so there appear to be some qrss right yes sir so I'll just show you this. So note the QRS. So these are the QRSs, right? So yes, these sir. are the QRSs. What is this? They... So they are also they are the they look like QRS. No. If they are if they are QRSs. Look at this V2. Look at this V3. Can they be P waves? They are P waves. They are P waves. Yes. So yes, sir, yes. Uh, Dr. Shantanu or uh, I think Dr. Ajay supported me in that. So these are probably P. So these are the QRS. You're absolutely right. So these are the P waves. So okay, these are the okay. P waves. V1, V2, V3 are simultaneous. These are the P waves. So I'll now show you the complete ECG. So this is the this was V1, which looks like a VT. Now look at this. One, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF. What is this now? Yes, sir. There is complete heart block, sir. Yeah. No. Atrial Actually, flutter. no, sir. This sorry, sorry. This is a flutter, flutter, flutter sir. Atrial flutter. Atrial Wait. flutter. But sir, it is the QRS appears to be at regular interval, so we cannot rule out RR interval appears to be constant, sir. So it could be a, a atrial flutter with complete heart block, sir. It's a better, you know, a better description would be atrial flutter with fixed or varying AV conduction, because okay. AV block tells you a pathology. Jab atrial flutter, itna, you know, the rate is so much, so it's a physiological property of the AV node that it will not conduct so much. So it's a varying AV conduction. That is a semantically better term to use. So okay, it's sir. the atrial flutter. Why did he have a systolic murmur and why these bizarre P waves? Sir, maybe he, I would like to look at the saturation, whether he has any Epstein's anomaly or something like that. These appear to be Himalayan T waves. X-ray. X-ray. Sir, there is gross cardiomegaly, sir. The uh, This is a well, the PA view, chest X-ray PA view, it is well exposed, well centralized. Uh, massive, cardi is, massive cardiomegaly massive and you cardi are ab absolutely right in cutting your diagnosis. So you were suspecting a Epstein, right? Yes. Sir. Well, whenever you have such a huge cardiomegaly, we have been taught in our DM times and maybe Dr. Ajay will support me, three diagnoses, pericardial effusion, Epstein's or severe PS with TR, right? With a narrow pedicle. So that is why he had that systolic murmur so again, you are absolutely right. So if you look at one monitor strip, you will diagnose a VT. So before you therapeutically manage these patients, if possible, take some time to get a 12 lead ECG. And if you get a 12 lead ECG, so this guy had a rapid atrial flutter with varying AV conduction. The P waves were Himalayan, as you rightly said, Epstein. So 
use of multiple leads for arrhythmia analysis by and large whenever possible shall we go on sir yes aap so, log which what should we comment on av conduction in this patient sir actually uh, dr malin i i this patient actually he had atrial flutter and he had we labeled him as a varying av conduction because he was in such rapid atrial flutter then he underwent cardioversion i don't have that ecg unfortunately and that after the cardioversion he went back in sinus rhythm so this was there was no pathological disease in the av node So again, if somebody wants to have a go at this straightforward ECG, just describe it for us. Con, uh, any student would uh, want to volunteer? Sure. Uh, should I take it, sir? Uh, yes, sir. No, no. Absolutely. Should I? No, you should. Uh, twelve lead ECG. Uh, showing P U A V is visible. So normal sinus rhythm, sir. Uh, with axis. Uh, normal axis uh, what we can appreciate is that st elevation uh, with coving in 2 3 avf uh, as well as uh, st elevation uh, qr although qr in uh, v1 so uh, from st elevation from v1 to v6 also uh, so uh, anterior extensive anterior as well as inferior wall my most probably sir it is a wrap around led uh, occlusion type 3 So again, you know, uh, massive ST elevations, multiple leads. I'll just show you the clinical history. As uh, so, this is a 61 year old lady. She was non-diabetic, non-hypertensive, non-smoker, and she was undergoing a transbronchial lymph node biopsy in the pulmonary ICU. Suddenly became restless, diaphoretic, hypotensive. The blood pressure dropped. This was the ECG which was immediately taken. So this was the ECG, and of course, our previous experiences. So we got an X-ray done. X-ray was normal, urgent echo, and she actually underwent an echo pre-operative clearance some weeks ago. Echo was normal, but at this time there was severe global hypokinesia. The ejection fraction was 30 percent, and with all these ECG changes, so obviously the instinct is to take her to the CCU and possibly take her to the lab because the X-ray was normal, and the ECG showed huge amounts of ST depression. She was very restless, desaturated. Fortunately, not on intubation. and the echo showed a complete global hypokinesia so you know while we were transporting her to the ccu this was the ecg you compare it with this you look at lead 2 3 over here right and v1 v2 v3 so this is about 15 minutes later when we took her from the pulmonary ccu to the coronary care unit because they are unfortunately in different buildings So, what do you feel about the SCT changes? Worse than before? I'll just show you the previous ECG. This is the previous ECG. Two, three AVF here. V one, V two, V four. Or does the ECG looks a bit better than before? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. ECG looks better in inferior. Yeah. So paradoxically, despite you know not giving much, we just gave her some inotropes. There was a slight reduction in the ST elevation, especially in inferior lead, precordial lead. Troponin was remarkably high, even though the the symptoms were only for about 1 hour 2 hour but troponin was through the roof now since the ecg was settling down we were also very confused that what is happening so we thought we will just wait for more time the pressures were picking up and there was a brief run of rapid vt during the resolution phase so this was a short run of vt which subsided spontaneously and this was the ecg after we didn't take her to the lab eventually because she started improving so this was the ecg at 24 hours would you like to read the ecg yes sir sir most of the ec uh, st elevation uh, has been settled more than 95% what i can see uh, but what uh, i can see is a uh, T wave in a lead two uh, looks flat, sir. Uh, in lead three, uh, appearance of slight negative T wave inversion, and then QS complex in V one, and a biphasic T wave in uh, two three uh, as well as uh, V one V two to V six up to sir we can say. But so it looks as if 
you know the changes have settled but there seems to be some poor progression of yes, qrs there yes. seem to be some sct changes would you do an angiogram in such a patient now sir i don't think patient if a patient is not having angina and and, and looking at this ecg there should not have been angina so i don't think uh, most probably it is recanalized uh, spontaneously but uh, how much is yes so i will have to sir a uh, look at the uh, clinical profile how much angina is patient is having she is no angina na she is in the icu she is on bed her pressures are picked up this is the ecg which shows you some poor progression so i, I would slightly disagree with you that now she is stable i have, i would be curious to know what has happened immediately we should have the led recanalized Sir, we should take for sir angiogram because uh, even 80 percent uh, uh, stenosis uh, may be considered as recanalized, but that is the significant stenosis. Yeah. So we were ourselves. Why not? It is a spasm. Why not? It is a coronary spasm. Why you are not thinking about spasm? Because patient recovered without any thrombolytic therapy, or only with the building of the pressure over the time patient recovered. So this looks like a spasm. absolutely so you know ajay sir is again very spot on so we thought that is a malignant vasospasm because takatsubo was unlikely why is takatsubo unlikely although the clinical picture classically looks looks like takatsubo only because the echo showed a global hypokinesia classically takatsubo should be a pical ballooning syndrome right so we took her for an angiogram after 48 hours not normal coronary unfortunately as ajay sir said we did not have you know any ergonovin or something like that and we were we did not we did not have it so this was the lv if you see it completely recovered in 48 hours so we actually again published it that this was malignant vasospasm probably due to a catecholamine storm we didn't understand why it happened the importance of showing such an ecg is that serial ecg that somebody mentioned in the beginning often are very very helpful so you in this case you know you would definitely consider taking the patient to the lab as you rightly said but while you are taking to the lab it's is from a different ward to another it is worthwhile to if you have the time to do another ecg on the way or in the ward see if the patient is cooling down and serial ecg in this patient actually showed some settling and the important key point which ajay sir pointed out was malignant coronary vasospasm because the patient recovered without any significant therapy thrombolytic therapy the patient only needed some fluid and inotrope support so sometimes these rare ecgs can happen you know uh, so you should you should understand the importance of doing a serial ecg as well and intervene at a point when it is safe both for the patient and procedurally also you know you are in control of the thing sir could be this ecg of uh, acute mi as it looks like uh, with completely recanalized led matlab completely recanalized is it possible sir no personally i feel you know i don't think she had an acute thrombotic occlusion because the coronaries were completely normal i think it was we postulated it to be a vasospasm because uh, artery recanalizing is possible without thrombolysis but at least on angiogram we find some residua we find some mild atherosclerotic disease we find mild soon some thrombotic ulcer or some residue of cad but the coronaries were dot clean uh, ajay sir shantanu sir milin what do you so think? it looks like a vasospasm involving two both led and sir both correct correct rather than only led yeah so that is what because the avr was elevated 2 3 avf was elevated so Okay. I'll just show. Uh, one. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask a doubt related that previous ECG? Yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, like the ECG you've shown in the end, like just before the angiogram, uh, sir, there is significant like the the R waves are completely lost. But considering that the LV function is there, is there any particular reason? Like considering the first ECG where there was ST elevation, there were the R waves appear to be preserved, but here the R waves are completely lost from V1 to V6. Any particular reasons, or even in two, three AVF, if we see there are R waves are not there significantly. Yeah, so we we were also a bit lost on that. That why is the ECG showing poor progression of the R waves? So initially we thought maybe it is positional or something. In fact, we did a repeat ECG as well after the angiogram before because we kept her for four five days. We were scared to discharge her, and surprisingly the ECG after that showed pick up the R waves that picked up. 
I don't have that ECG again. So maybe we thought that it is a positional thing, but your observation is right. Based on this ECG, we were expecting some disease. But okay. when we did not find any disease, we just held on to her for two, three days, did a repeat ECG after three, four days. So it showed uh, picked up, picking up of the voltages. So you're right, this ECG did confuse us. Yeah. And based on this, we were more keen on having an angiogram pre-discharge. But we were completely... Sir, what, what about sir DAPT for this patient, sir? Should I, uh, we are still a troponin raised LV function, uh, deranged ST, uh, changes is still persisting sir so should i again it's a it's a good question so theoretically if you see she had a troponin leak she had sct changes she hurry eco was globally hypokinetic she might have warranted dapt but we did not give her okay, uh, it's a good question dr ajay dr shantanu milan what would you say dr ashpal uh, we didn't give her. I, I i think uh, dapt one can give but aggressive dapt so there is no no to uh prasugrel in this case one can go with aspirin and clopidogrel. Yes, okay. Sir. Aspirin itself cause more visual spasm. <laughs> so we we did not want we did not want because she had some pulmonary problem. We did not want to give DAPT. But it was discussed, and your question is absolutely relevant. So maybe if somebody gives it, he's not wrong either. But as Ajay sir said, prasugrel has no role because you know you would not be giving prasugrel to medically managed patients. Based on which trial? Can you tell us? Just as a side, as a as a Prasugrel <laughs> trial, medical major trial. He say na. I want to me thirty-eight, sir. A three point three ton. Right, sir. So but the most important thing is that uh, see on one, one thing we have to uh, one thing for students. So Prasugrel trial is starting with the T, and Ticagliolol trial starts with the P. Oh, so wow. that you have to you have to just summarize. This is a master acronym now. This I also didn't know. Very good. <laughs> Great. So there is just one request for the PGs who are participating. If they can make the videos on uh, Sri Ram, Sunil. Sir, shall I go ahead? Thank yes. You, yes. So this is a 14 year old diabetic male. He is in the emergency, feeling a bit lightheaded. Pulse rate is around 50, is a bit bradycardic, blood pressure is 100, slightly tachypneic, saturation is normal, right? So, diabetic, slight lightheadedness, bradycardia, and this is the ECG. So, I have a video on Karalias, so now we can protect my dick. Anybody wants to have a go? Describe the ECG for us. Sridham, just picking you up randomly. Yes, I understand. Badao. Sir, actually, the uh, grossly, if we see that there is not a uniform rhythm initially, there are few junctional complexes. There, are, there is a VPC. There is a uh, then I can see a couple of sinus beats, but there is no uniform rhythm. And overall, the patient appears to be bradycardic. I would like to. Like, is there any other history available, sir? Any history of fever or anything more? Good, good. So, so beauty right. is prolonged. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's what I was wanting to show you. Junctional rhythm and QT is prolonged, no? So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, QT is obviously prolonged. QT is around 614, right? So, expectedly, you know, as soon as... So, this was the patient's appearance. He, he was brought in with a catheter someplace. So, any any other thing which you notice? Sir, the urine appears, there appears to be gross hematuria. Yeah, so, it looks reddish in color. The skin also looks a bit reddish, no? Yes, sir. It looks a bit dusky. So, so this is just a photograph of the patient. So, ECG showed a junctional rhythm and immediately when he came to the, after the admission, he had this. So, it is expected, you know, long as Dr. Ajay sir said, is a longish QT, sudden monomorphic VT with hemodynamic compromise, right? So he was cardioverted, obviously. And uh, after that, so when he was, I don't know whether I showed you the slide. So what, what will you do now? He was cardioverted and he got back sinus rhythm. I'll show that ECG later. 
so you got him out of the woods what other history will you take sir like i would like to ask if he he was take he was on any any other comorbidities he had for which he was having any medications or something okay so he is a diabetic no so you take a drug history i mean you know he is not volunteering anything i mean in from as far as diabetes is concerned he is on some oral hypoglycemic i forget what he was taking non hypertensive and as you rightly said no history of fever what other history will you take sir like any history of myalgias or anything like this could be related to rhabdomyolysis or something like that okay so you will also ask him, that's a good question you will also ask him for any drug any, any toxin intake or any herbal drugs or you know ayurvedic drugs whatever so when he was asked a lot of times you know this is the first time we have seen this he had said that he accidentally took alta wo jo pairon mein lagate hain na jo bengali women lagati hain pairon mein i am sure you would have heard of so and he took about 25 grams one day ago so so we didn't even know what alta has so then we had to read it up i'll just show you so that is why probably there was a reddish pink discoloration of the skin and the urine and we were suspecting there is some hemolysis or myoglobinuria going on so that is why this thing was there so we worked him up for whatever you know markers of hemolysis and uh, myoglobin in the urine and all so this was the ecg which completely settled down so they so showing showing some atrial ectopic here and there but the qt seems to be recovering junction rhythm yes. is gone yes sir so so and this was the after, so initially he we thought that he might go into renal failure he was a bit he, blood gas showed a metabolic acidosis but he did not require any dialysis support we just given some fluids and initially for the vt he was given some magnesium sulfate obviously no amidron or anything but again the vt settled down and we just managed him with fluids and he recovered and this is the skin color on the 6th or 7th day urine completely normalized so we labeled this man a lilac man with tachycardia as an acronym for alta so he is lilac in color pink in color with ongoing tachycardia and when we read up so alta contains azo dyes and something called ppd so this is a phenyl diamine derivative and it is very commonly seen in hair dyes so hair dyes toxicity when we read it up it leads to two kinds of toxicities precipitates a myocarditis and leads to vt vf storm ppd and as would i but obviously the patient did not have myocarditis the lv function was completely normal so when we sent his urine for analysis so no heavy metal could be detected but sample did contain azodides and fragmented moiety so i thought i'll just show you this example as well because we have actually seen it for the first time so the point again for showing this ecg is when an unexplained arrhythmia comes as you rightly said importance of toxin injections and i i remember dr yash also showing us some ecgs of bidirectional tachycardia secondary to ayurvedic and herbal drug intake so again rare ecgs the important thing to pick up in these ecgs is once you have got the patient out of the woods by managing the primary arrhythmia take a good drug history as in the first case the cons case hypokalemia agar ho raha to diuretics hai ya koi toxin injection hai ki nahi hai so this was this case uh, somebody wants to add anything dr milin dr shantanu uh, or i can i just add? want to ask you one thing why sir, the body color was such sir we we actually asked some pharmacologists and a few guys uh, in fact the forensic guys as well because we could not understand so that is the exact question we asked so they said ki this uh, alta probably gets deposited in the skin uh, pigments and then it slowly clears off so we are ourselves not very clear and this was the exact question we asked ki body color kyu red ho gaya and we were expecting some myoglobinuria or some hematuria nahi nahi urine urine color was red because of only pigments and not because of hemoglobin na yes yes and there is no uh, hemolysis ha huh. so we could not figure out why the skin became red because alta injection has never been reported the only thing which has been reported is hair dye toxin injection and in that also the urine has been reported to be red or brownish in color i think some case reports from calcutta or somewhere i read it up i am forgetting now but uh, and that is due to ppd and azo dyes but 
to date we could not understand why the skin became sort of red so that is a good question but honestly i i don't know the answer myself wonderful case <laughs> shall i show one more sir if you have time or yes yes we are we are now excited we okay. want to okay. see all I'm, all your collection i am also very excited so i can go on so milin saab baithe hain so this is in the cat lab so sunil or somebody so this is the ecg and this is in the cat lab so read the ecg for us this is upar ke do ecgs hain aur ek niche aortic pressure tray sara aortic pressure se i'm sorry i cut off the scale it is at normal 110 or 70 something like that what does the ecg show describe it for us so may try nahi nahi no, you have to uh, sir the actually considering the aortic pressure tracings the uh, there there appears to be some sort of a, a high voltage complex which is there it looks more like an artifact because it is not the like the pressures are coming immediately after that small voltage qrs maybe it is some sort of an ecg artifact so this is the artifact na the vertical line yes sir so the vertical line seems to be some artifact absolutely correct and can you describe the artifact further for us does it capture the myocardium or doesn't capture the myocardium sir from the, the there is no any like there is no cause after those beats it it is just coming at regular intervals and it is walking through the qrs so there is no excellent so it is walking through the qrs doesn't seem to capture the so you, your temporary wire must be in ivc or something like that so it is like that only so very good so one differential is kai bar hota hai permanent pacemaker hum log laga dete hain you you know take out the temporary and it is actually in the ivc keeps on firing so that is one differential right anything else in contemporary cath lab time temporary absolutely agree so while so in the cath lab so these are the artifacts you right so one is temporary pacing artifact absolutely correct ye hai uska ye procedure chal raha hai can you identify this what kind of a balloon is this ye balloon ka ek lithotripsy absolutely ivl balloon sir absolutely good 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 good, good. so ivl balloon so you know I, so this is the and this is the in vitro video of the ivl so it is so remarkable ki cornelius ke andar so this kind of a vaporization happens what kind of a pressure you gave in ivl kitna pressure aata how much atmosphere four atmosphere sir sorry four atmosphere sir we gave in four atmosphere to aap balloon ko phulate ho na total what is kind of transmitted up to 50 sir it finally एब्सोल्युटली ट्रांसमिटेड अप टू 50 तो जब वो यूरेट्रल लिथोट्रिप्सी करते हैं जो यूरोलॉजी वाले उसका कितना प्रेशर होता है नहीं आईडिया दिस इज लेस देन दैट मोर देन दैट मोर देन दैट सर आई थिंक मोर देन दैट इट्स मच मोर देन दैट सो सो दीस आर शॉक टॉपिक्स एंड व्हाई डू दे कम एट फिक्स रेगुलर रेट जो अजय सर बोल रहे थे ना सो दिस इज एट व्हाई डू दे कम एट फिक्स रेगुलर रेट कितनी पल्स कितने हर्ट्ज वो वो होती है उसकी साइकिल क्या होती है sir one cycle i think are 10 impulse we are give give sir every cycle we give the 10 impulse sir up to 10 cycle we can give usually it is a benign thing right and literature has shown if patients are bradycardic at rest then the incidence is more but you are right so you know this can be shown you as a spotter during the exam shock topics during ivl and one important very important differential is a temporary wire so you should not forget that well so this is a 45 year old guy who underwent a treadmill correct and this is the ecg avnrt pathway tachycardia not sure who wants to go shriram or sunil बताओ ही अंडरवेंट अ ट्रेडमिल एंड हैड सम 
you know he was undergoing evaluation for some cardiac symptoms so what does the ecg show again the, the, the lower rhythm strip is uh, a normal sinus rhythm with a heart rate of around 80 per minute 75 per minute so this appears to be that uh, the so because uh, the leads uh, with uh, leads v, uh, one the limb leads and the chest leads are reconfigured Hello. by the mitex sara de de because the uh, these appears that uh, uh, a machine has taken up the p waves also and it has plotted it as uh, qrs uh, complexes yeah so sir sir p wave looks uh, inverted in 2 3 avf uh, although it's a short rp tachycardia so i can think avrt So the first person who was saying, I could not distinguish. Who was saying? So uh, if you say tachycardia, how do you explain this? So this is the raw rhythm. You know, many times these ECGs, Yash has again shown us so many examples. Linked medium, likhe aata hai usse. Linked median report. What happens is that this is the raw data. So you should always look at this. This is the true data. If the tachycardia is here, then it has to be there in the bottom strip as well. So this shows you completely normal rhythm. so i'll just if you see over here v1 ke andar you have a clearly rf complex and if you see i'll blow up this v3 i'll blow up this part if you see see this this is the actual sinus rhythm sinus beat which is marked with a star and these are the artifacts the motion artifacts the uh, the telemetry rhythm artifacts which are in, picked up by the machine and it Sort of plots it into a tachycardia. So you should always look at the raw rhythm downstairs in the bottom strip. So this is all artifact. So this is just nothing. So these are all artifacts which are picked up by the machine. And normally, you know, we cut it off. Here, we linked median report is written. So that is another clue that this is a problematic and this is an artifact. So again, you might have some examples like this. This was some treadmill done outside. It was referred for. Tachycardia ablation or any something like that, but he didn't have anything at all. Ajay sir, आगे चलने एक बारी और एक और दिखा दूँ. Yes sir, absolutely. I just one comment on the link median thing because lot of centers are doing stress tests and health checkups, and many of them don't record raw data at all. Yeah. So it is not uncommon even to get exaggerated STP changes in these link median tracings. So. Yeah. Everybody who is doing stress tests, the students especially, should know that you must record raw data and you must interpret the stress test only on the raw data, not on the link median cases. Absolutely. Even for ST. Uh, when you want to uh, interpret the stress test for uh, ischemia, the most important thing is that if you are getting these uh, computer-based stress tests, which are not uh, dedicated stress test, uh, then you just find out what is the baseline QRS. Uh, height and at the peak QRS height. If the peak QRS height is slightly increased, then it is also suggestive of ischemia. So in cath lab, when you are injecting during coronary angiography, you can find out when you are injecting for the coronary angiography, the QRS height increases because the blood is replaced with the dye. So that is the most important sign of ischemia. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is a 20 year old male he was undergoing some surgery for epistadias and, and an epidural procedure was being done they put an epidural epidural catheter gave fentanyl midazolam propofol and the anesthetist sort of noticed these complexes on the monitor and they thought it's an nsvt the blood pressure was about 98 98 by 54 saturation was normal so they i think they gave some amiodrone bolus or something it did not settle so what they did was the electrodes were reapplied new monitor was taken and then they sent this down to us in the cath lab by the by whatsapp so what do you think is happening the patient had some ejection fraction was around 40 45 no cad but he was cleared for surgery and this was the monitor strip on the on the ot table
what would you tell them to do give some amio give some lignocaine go ahead so the most important thing here q is your spot tracing and your bp tracing so you have to follow that particular thing and then you have to do the answer uh this appears to be an artifact sir again good good so what will you tell them to, to maybe cautery use sir when yeah. they use uh, spot ha so important thing is that you will probably think that it is an artifact as you rightly say and as ajay sir also said that you know try to sink it down with the aortic pressure trace and uh, so when we told them to check all their connections surprisingly you know they were using this body warmer for the patient gerathum so this ke electrodes and this ke connections were you know sort of interfering with the with the ecg cables and everything so when they disconnected this warmer everything disappeared so again this was an easy thing but the point is as dr ajay also pointed out they try to match this with the aortic pressure trace and these are artifacts and of course you rightly picked up artifacts can lead to such problems and sometimes you know people treat them inadvertently giving drugs left right and center so we have had a look at various things i'll just sign off with one more ek sir last dikha dun agar time hai to yes sir yes sir please this please. is one last ecg so please. again just shriram or anybody just read it out for me what is it Uh, so this is a ecg of a normal sign it appears to be normal sinus rhythm uh, the axis appears to be normal around 60 degrees there is pro- the p wave and there appears to be with p wave p wave and pr interval appears to be normal there is st elevation in leads 2 3 avf with reciprocal uh, inversion in one avl there appears to be st depression with upright Uh, or biphasic t waves in leads v1 v2 and there are also st elevations in v4 to v6 so i would like to look at the posterior leads in this patient to so, right. so it's a inferior wall mi and as you said three more than two st depression in lead one so suspecting a rca so now the nurse calls you two hours later this is the issue sister in charge calls you That sir, is the ECG as a hai. So now, what is the finding? Sir, any any change in symptoms or what was the symptom history of the patient? Like? Yeah, he has some ongoing chest pain. He is waiting for you to take him to the lab. Sri Ram. Lab me Dr. Shantanu Ajay or Milan ke cases lage hoonge pandra bhi. Sri Ram, actually, you just concentrate on limb leads and then concentrate on chest leads. Yes. So now there is some. There appears to be ST elevation in one AVL with inferior reciprocal changes, but the chest leads V one and V two have not changed. So is there any the the limb the chest leads actually, sir? There are ST elevations in V three to V six have completely disappeared. Maybe position chest lead positioning any change may be there. So as Dr. Ajay was telling you, V1, V2 look almost the same, right? So, is there another lateral MI? Oh, yeah, na one or the other. Okay. Mm. Sir, I would like to like rule out a LCX related. So, so where are the inferior gone? So again, the, as Dr. Ajay was telling you, when you find something changing so dramatically, and if you see, you should suspect. Normally, you tell me in uh, in a normal ECG. Which lead, uh, lead one or two? I say P wave, P wave, P for Persia. P wave is taller in which lead? Lead P wave two. is lead, lead two. two. So, is me kis me prominent hai? Sir, is lead one, hai? lead one has more. It appears to be like labeling mistake must have happened. Labeling kaise ho jayegi? Labeling or labeling hai re? Electrode change kiya hai. Electrode change. so i'll just show you the last electro change which has you know very huge therapeutic connotation and this this is real example so we understood left arm right arm theek ho gaya aur ek humne topsy turvy dekh liya this is this last one right 
so left arm left leg reversal again we'll just go through it vectorially so i'll just show you so this is left arm hum niche le aaye left leg upar le aaye correct so what happens lead 3 inwards right right now right arm idhar aa gaya right arm to idhar hai left arm idhar hai so this is lead 2 jo hoti hai that become lead 1 left leg right arm idhar aa gaya so lead 1 becomes lead 2 right so and if you see avl avf wo badal jate hain avl becomes avf and avf becomes avl easy to understand so lateral becomes inferior so what happens is that when you change the electrode left arm left leg ko ulta kar dete ho to lead 3 completely inwards and the clue is p in lead 1 becomes taller than p in lead 2 because lead 1 is actually lead 2 and lead 2 is actually lead 1 so we'll again come back to this ecg so if you see this was the original ecg inferior wall mi as you rightly said and look at the p waves expectedly p in 2 taller than p in 1 this is what we normally expect aur so nurse ne bolaya ki isko to jo lateral ho gaya kuch but when you see you see the lead 3 is completely inverted and note that the p wave in lead 1 is more taller than the p wave in lead 2 so these are subtle changes but again if you pick them up they are very gratifying and lead 3 is totally inverted so when you sort of do the normal ecg again it is back to inside wall so again these electrode placements are very very important so you know reminders all these ecg tell us that early diagnostic closure should not be done in ecg good clinical correlation rule out a pneumothorax rushing such patients to the lab or lytic therapy is very very problematic so don't forget the possible the you have a checklist in mind clinical examination x ray electrolytes so all these will help us and of course you know having elite faculty like today's people that will help us most so thank you for your attention thank you so much thank you believe please thank you very much sir i mean some of the ecgs that we have been seeing today are once in a lifetime kind of ecgs but because everybody has now seen them uh, when they encounter such situations i think uh, it's best to have known rather than to make a mistake and then learn from a mistake so that's very good and uh, dr shantanu gua sir and dr yashpal sharma sir are there both of them could you sir please have your comments on some of the ecgs or any specific principles of ecg interpretation that you would like to impart to the students one thing is uh, today the aditya went through the ecg session showing only the fallacies of ecg i would rather say because either the leads were reversed or are <laughs> the uh, super upper limb lower limb reversal sort of a thing wonderful this is a wonderful thing we unless and until you see the case as a whole you are bound to miss it you need to ask the patient the history you need to start from the very beginning patient not having any chest pain having an ecg sc elevation obviously you'll think thrice before stamping it so the age or clinical practice it remains and uh, it should be followed in its true letter and spirit that is one secondly uh, you are showing some std change or st elevation in in fact like things with the pneumothorax i had a patient whom we made a almost a similar mistake we published it later it it was a st elevation in the anterior leads patient had some vague chest discomfort uh the residents were about to thrombolize at that time the lab was not there was about to thrombolize but uh, only issue was the patient was not having the pain we expect in a patient of an anterior wall infarction so we held back investigated x ray showed some something else and ultimately with the uh, it turned out to be a mediastinal tumor which was pressing over the heart and that gave this type of an std st elevation there was no evolutionary changes we followed that patient for 4 5 days in the ward there was no evolutionary changes and eco also sorted it out so 
a compression over the heart often gives a schistagmoid elevation what whatever may be the type of compression so that is one thing one need to keep in mind thank you Sir, Sir, Dr. Yashpal Sharma, sir, please. Yeah, I think this was a very good session. In fact, uh, these technical changes in ECG, uh, according to my views, this should be, there used to be our very senior technical supervisor, Mr. Sharma, long back in 1991. What he used to do, he used to reverse ECG by himself and then give that ECG. So basically, if that is done routinely and is shown to the uh, residents and consultant, then they become more. Otherwise, by usually if one is not seeing the ECG, one may miss. Secondly, it's very important that other pneumothorax and the other things should be seen clinically. Uh, similar to, just like sometimes pneumonia is there, severe pneumonia with MI, and that patient goes to cath lab, then also the patient dies as happened in COVID. So basically clinical, good clinical, and then appropriate decision to thrombolize or to take the patient to cath lab. That is also very important, similarly. Because if good clinical examination, you should not take any patient to cath lab if, if he is having very contraindication, absolute, for even intervention. So in that, your supportive lytic therapy may be better. So these clinical findings are very important. I think this session is very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So somehow one feels that when we are, uh, we are working in the cath lab, at that time, we only have our interventionist hats on. And we only put on our analytical and you know uh, academic hats when we are in such webinars, the students when they are in their exams. But these things are going to come in day-to-day -day practice. So we have to be aware of these things all the time. It's not only for these academics. Uh, these situations we have to face from day-to-day -day and uh, we have to think, I mean, we should not be over-obsessed uh, with taking the patient to the lab for interventions. We should look beyond that, I suppose. Yeah, I that's true. In uh, fact, if the markers are not raised, our ECG just changes. One should have a clinical correlation with immediate results. But sometimes what we are seeing, sometimes we are relying only on TROP. Nowadays it is being seen, I think that paper we will be publishing, TROP is negative, patient is having pain, and myoglobin is positive. It may be bought slightly positive. So that, and when you do NGO, there is a 90% stenosis. So that sort of new thing is coming. So basically, over a period of time, the marker and other things, they become very important along with ECG. Thank you. Ajay sir, please could you get some more light? Uh, thank you, Dr. Aditya sir. Basically, you have done a very wonderful job. Very important things. I also learned a lot from today's session and uh, the students are very much benefited. So I request you to uh, give us one another more session for ECG related to the congenital heart diseases and diagnosis of those conditions. So I might request you for that particular thing. And today I learned a lot. And my sincere thanks to all uh, student participants like uh, Sunil, Ani, Sriram, uh, another Sunil, and uh, Shantanu sir, and uh, Yashpal sir, and Milin. Uh, so... Uh, my sincere thanks and we'll stop here and I'll hand over the mic to Ajanta Pharma. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. It's a wonderful session. So first of all, I'd like to convey our immense thanks uh, for this wonderful, uh, really uh, insightful session on ECG twist and trap. And thanks, Dr. Aditya Kapoor, nicely presented. And also we are really thanks to our extreme panelists, Dr. Swantana Goha, sir, and Jasper Sharma, sir, for their value additions. So, sir, I think this is a quite uh, learning uh, sessions for the all DMPG students and they'll helpful for their, you know, future preparations for exams and it really getting a lot of insights. So that, that is a key objective for this program. And let's just put one announcement over here. Uh, those who are participating in this program. So there's eight series uh, for this entire DMPG workshop program. 
So each series, uh, some uh, our postgraduate student will participate based on their uh, participation's answer. Our extreme panelists will give some marks on them, and at the end of the program, we will award them from our side. The first top three, you know, uh, participant will be awarded uh, from Ajanta Pharma. So I request all the participants, please give your <clears throat> best shots. Make this program more interactive and learning for your uh, fellow students. So that is the key objective. Thanks, Doctor. Once again, uh, Doctor. Mahajan sir, Doctor. Milin sir, wonderful sir. Thank you. Good I'd, day. I, I'd like yeah, to sure, thank, sure. I'd, I'd yeah. like to thank your team and especially Doctor. Shantanu sir, Yashpal sir, Doctor. Ajay sir, and of course Doctor. Milin. So it's always a pleasure to be you know part of a team which is so humble, so focused, and always interested in academy. So it's it's my privilege. Absolutely, absolutely. 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 Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Thank you. Night. Good, Thank you. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.